Hello, everybody. Welcome to the party. Um, thank you so much for being here with us today to celebrate the launch of everyone's favorite Gemini, Noor Hindi, and her new book, Dear God, Dear Bones, Dear Yellow, uh, a debut collection of poems published by Haymarket Books. Uh, you know, <laughs> We got onto this call and I asked Noor, what would you like this to be? Is there a plan? There was not. Um, and so what I wanna, the reason I bring that up is to say that this event is, is one of friendship and communal celebration. It's unstructured. We're gonna be uh, just, you know, vibing with each other in celebration of the work that Noor has done and uh, the celebration of it being out in the world. Um, you know, the thing that I will say is that I uh, have gotten the good fortune to have spent time with these poems in various forms in the last couple of years and to have known Noor and be able to celebrate Noor and the work that she does to bring language to a place that is freer, somewhat more just, closer to the things that this book is aiming towards, God, bones, yellow. Right, a celebration of um, stop laughing. This is this is going to be thoughtful. <laughs> I think you know this is a, a it's a perfect title for this book and for the work that Nord does because these are the things that her poems are able to hold in balance with one another, right? To hold God, to hold bones and the traumas and violences that inform our relationship with the world, and also to hold the color yellow and to hold joy and celebration alongside and intertwined with all of those things. And that's what we get from Noor Hindi poems, along with just, you know, some, some really good bangers, um, some really good bops that we are going to hear tonight. We're going to hear so many bops tonight from a truly incredible group of poets, writers, thinkers, dentists, um, and dear friends. And that's what you're in for, so settle in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open us up with um, one poem of my own and one poem from Leila Khalid uh, to help ground us and, and get us in the mood to hear from everyone else. Um, and I think the order of the poets, I'm telling this mostly for the people on this call, the order will be unknown to you. And I, as I begin introducing the next person, I'll, I'll put little hints as to who it is. And then you will have to know that it's you and start reading. Okay, so it's going to be, it's like, it's, you know, it'll be like, this person is a poet. And everyone's like, okay, not helpful, super not helpful, could be anyone. And then we'll gradually get more specific and we'll go on and, and, and we'll see if that works. And if it doesn't, then we'll just end early and I'll just go away and live in a cave. Okay, here we go. Kill head of Elbit Systems. One, kill head of Dow Chemical. Two, destroy plant, three, make it unprofitable for them to build again. Diane de Prima, revolutionary letter number nine. Must access blueprints or hijack blueprints from discipline of letters, eat them plus puke up new ones. This to MFA committee. Necessity for weapons, one for body, many for spirit. Poem is weapon to kill a spirit plus wash it from sand of memory. Red poppies sprouting from a fertile throat, throat. Ripe figs swallowing wasps plus being swallowed by financier plus hatching. Reminder, Hartman interviewed Baraka plus asked if more effective way than poetry to bring about change. Yes, he told her, the gun. Poem is weak, need to fortify, make rupture in language of sand, S. Poetry's only purpose is remind us we will die, plus we're not dead yet. Poems should steal language back from clutches of America. Thank you, S. First, infiltrate American letters. Then, transition this into wealthy upwards career. Prizes, grants, book deals, parties of turquoise, plus the good cheeses. Reminder, get good cheese at corner store tonight. Grey Wolf or other, Arrow. Target, plus Wells Fargo, plus Amazon. These, Arrow, upper echelons of finance, plus war profiteers, schmooze mightily. Find Elbit Systems rep at Gala. Set up meetings, propose collaboration, a new inclusive workshop for their employees to give them benefits of poetry, express themselves, remind their poetry often on side of power. Don't forget, don't fetishize. 
make them like you. Poems must be carefully calibrated for this. Avoid true language, skew lyrical, do not frighten workshop participants. Reminder, burn this document tonight after getting good cheese. Boardroom will welcome you in after successful workshop. Kill Killing fig is in your left breast pocket, keep it close, with libations of still cucumber water. Remember, God is in the cucumbers, plus they are spiritual poison to these architects of slaughter. The cucumbers are a spirit weapon, plus now you must fortify, plus join them in fight. You are asked to read poem to head of Elbit Systems. This is crucial moment in world historical arc of your spirit. When standing in front of architects of slaughter, when feeling the pull of the earth, when you open your mouth, will a poem emerge or a gun? And, um, you know, I think so much of what Norse poetry does is bring us into a wider and more capacious celebration of, among many things, the work and labor that Palestinian women do to move us towards justice and towards freedom. And so in the spirit of that, uh, I pulled uh, a poem from Leila Khaled as uh, Leila Khaled's memoir, My People Shall Live. Um, she writes really beautifully about what poetry does for her as uh, a means of writing through liberation. And so this is a poem that is untitled in the book. Yes, we have lost everything. We have lost life and its meaning. We have lost the humanity of man. We are a people that lost its land and he who loses his land loses his life for land is the source of life. My beloved, I shall return on the wings of eagles to you. I shall return repeatedly to spread terror in the heart of the enemy. I shall flag the enemy, I shall pulverize him, and why not? How can I forget the rage of the tempest that struck my dear father? A thousand greetings I send to your soul, my father, and the souls of Palestinian fathers in the beyond. Tortured, you left Palestine, and uprooted, you lived. Desire replaced health, sadness, joy, hatred, love, humiliation, pride. Father, rest assured, I shall avenge your honor and redeem your dignity, the honor and dignity of all martyrs by cannons, bullets, bayonets. From the heavens we shall descend, from the sea we shall come, from Mount Carmel we shall leap to the heart of Haifa. My front shall do this to tend the wounded, succor the needy, and inspire the children of despair. Mother, I can no longer keep my secret. I am a lover of Palestine and I have no other love. Therefore remain firm and constant, unafraid my people face tyranny and oppression. Be with me, my beloved. Remember our martyrs, remember the stolen lands. Take all difficulties with steadfast revolutionary violence for the path is long and steep and the recovery of the homeland needs absolute firmness. Henceforth, we shall not bend our heads. The enemy may be strong, but we are much stronger. Our cause is right and just, and we have begun to believe in ourselves. We no longer know fear. Wait for me. Wait for victory. We shall return. Mm. So. It is now time to enter the world of one of the other incredible poets who is here with us this evening to celebrate Noor. Um, let's, who shall it be? Who shall it be? I'm, I'm looking and looking and looking and I'm going through my little bios and I'm going to decide who we shall have next. Okay, um, the next poet we are going to hear from um, is an incredible, incredible artist in many, many forms whose work uh, has been so formative to, to me and I know to so many others in this room, uh, whose poems move at the speed of a prayer, 
whose poems move with the logic of dreams, uh, whose poems are rooted as deep as mountains are, who is also an illustrator and makes some incredibly very, very cool zines, of which I have one that is about Twin Peaks, my favorite television shows. And that person is the one, the only, Jess Riscola, who is going to read us some fucking poems. Aw, thank you, Fargo. Um, wow. It's very cool to be a part of this because um, everyone here, like, inspires me every time I, like, read anything of yours or, like, even just have a conversation with you guys. Um, and there's, like, a familiar warmth I have right now, like, being in this digital room with you guys. Um, and I'm, like, very honored that, Nor, you, like, invited me to celebrate with you because you're a poet that always inspires me and, like, you, like, write your ass off, but also, like, all the other stuff that, like, comes before sitting down and writing, like, the raging, the, like, the movement, the, I don't know, you're just, like, always um, in motion and, like, I don't know, it's very, I'm very, like, in awe of you. Um, and also when I was, like, reading the book, um, I remember thinking, like, wow, like, I wish that I had this when I was younger and, like, had all of this, like, rage and, like, I'm an Arab woman and, like, how do I, like, allow myself to be, like, everything that means to me, like, in a way that is outward and brave. And, like, your book does that. Um, and I'm really glad it's there now for, like, you know, people who need it right now. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to hold it in my hands. I'm going to be like creeping um, on my local bookstores until somebody has it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I have a few poems. Um, this one is called Q Teen Thoughts with a line from Psych. Um, Cause I love, I know Fargo also loves that show. <laughs> Um, there's one line. Um, I can tell you at the end which line it was, but. The past is a jinn sitting on your chest. Dreams aren't warnings, they are forecasts. The weather will always get inside your body where the convergence of meaning strikes. So learn to swim. The other woman is you with different teeth. Always a rose on the table for blessings and two for love, which is a container for a shared vocabulary of symbols. Stand in front of your mirror. What tarot card are you today? Consider your posture. Are you held up by a stem, a wick, a sword and stone waiting for the hand of God? Ya God, Ya Allah. God and Allah are the same articulations of wind realized at different registers. You don't have to be praying all the time. Often you are heard the first time, a gift to be read. You are always a watcher, but it's never too late to be a doer, to plunge a trowel into dirt and tuck a seed behind the unknown's ear. The sun is a sound, the heart is a radio when you dream of your love singing, and a thermometer when you begin to forget the shape of their ears. An owl is just the sky whistling through its nose while sleeping. When the color blue rests its eyes and it's just night, not sadness. There's a million reasons a horse loses. None of them have to do with crystals and moonbeams, but partly to do with blood. The tools are important, but ultimately, do you know how to be your own light dappled through milkweed? Butterflies and moths are two sides of the same shaft of light. Their shadows on the wall a projection, two sides of the same hope. You are protected. Can anybody see the future? What's over there? Why is there always a president? Why is everyone a cop or a test? If you drop a question mark, you're supposed to flip it heads up for the next person, the bulb from which a penny grows. Dead ends are doors with no handles. Even in hell, you keep digging. Fate is just pheromones. 
that's a cool sentence, but do I believe it? That's a nice question, but can it carry my weight? When a sickness doesn't kill you, but still takes pounds of flesh, there is a separate heaven for your melted parts in the clouds spread above us. Our bodies are part of the water cycle. Water has memories. Water has memory. Our bodies repeat like calendars. The clouds are archives. Fact check me, baby, then strike the record. The world's a needle, like my finger when I trace the lines in his palm, and then a black bird flew out of his mouth in the dead of night, a song, graceful, mine. That's just one example. I don't have another. Um, the psych line was, where are you? There's a million reasons a horse loses. None of them have to do with crystals and moonbeams. I don't know if any, any other psychos are in here, but that was from the horse racing episode. <laughs> Um, this next poem is called Sad Girl, Saturn Return, because I'm in the middle of, I'm Saturn's bitch currently. I've lost my mind at swan after swan blooming outside the window of the Northeast Regional, convinced myself it meant I could control the sun and my menstrual cycle. But the mind is not lost, it's just replaced with meaning. The wasp burrowing into the fig to lay her eggs. The brain an inverted flower waiting for pollination. We mistake anything sweet for fruits, anything pretty for a miracle. Blood is honey and we hum ourselves to sleep about it. Then years later we're like, what the fuck? That was crazy. I went crazy. One time a cosmic record keeper said to me, do not be afraid to lose your mind, baby. I'm afraid to lose a lot of things because I've lost so much already, like my hair and various beads, stones, tax forms, you, the will to live, laugh, love, haha, ha, text it, JK, I lost cell signal and you can lose my number. I'm not mad at you, I'm just really so bad at texting back. And also, I'm like dropping hints that I want you to write me love letters. I want you to write me love letters, which before the apocalypse... I would have expected this deep desire expressed to be my hubris, but turns out in America, our love letters could save the US postal system. One dollar for a stamp, another dollar to Israel to bankroll the violent dispossession of indigenous Palestinians from their ancestral lands. He loves me, he loves me not. That's not romantic, that's a fact. Inevitable, but so is the fall of every empire. What's romantic? is the baby blue eyelid of a morning dove who doesn't fly away when I lean close enough to identify that its eyeball looks like a melting Easter colored M&M I could just pluck and pop right into my mouth. But I haven't lost my mind again, not yet. Just the meaning I once attached to these birds. Or maybe not the meaning, but the excitement at the optimism of this meaning. Actually, meanings are like birds. They roost then fly away after a season. Next year, they land somewhere else, closer to the horizon of my awareness, a speck on the gradient atmosphere, an errant glitter fleck on the left cheekbone, last night's makeup alerting everyone in the Dunkin' Donuts that I'm on a walk of no shame, the distant swan song still playing long after the swan has died, like the light from a star which may or may not be dead. We are sadder about stars than we are about birds, even though every bird I've ever seen before, like three months ago, is most likely dead. But still, something hatches in my brain at the flutter of wings, the avian connection to angels, to dinosaurs, to prehistory, and my chicken sandwich. Meaning is the many winged henchmen of time. Have I been repeating meaning too much? No, no, I have been invoking it. There, fixed it. And now I've mentioned the poem inside the poem, like a good little Arab who knows you're always watching. This type of repetition and exposition frowned upon in MFA workshops. But MFA workshops are full of Zionists and I am full of blood and shit, which I hereby sever from the meaning of non-credibility and tell it to you objectively. I finally started bleeding again. On the eclipse actually, which makes me nervous because I think we're supposed to lay low and hydrate on eclipses and that's it, lest we fuck up our whole shit. If you're related to me, stop listening here. 
no, for real, please stop. I'm trying to be brave and honest in conversations around my body. Hot girl summer, hot girl life. Yes, I'm a year away from 30 and so far have only merged with men on new moons, full moons, post tarot readings and joints, most recently an eclipse, followed shortly by blood. I'm like Jay-Z on a loop, nervously watching the sky, wishing on dead birds because I can't see stars in Boston. Except when I'm in Jamaica Pond staring at moonlit kneecaps, I'd want to draw, but nothing else. So, too distracted to notice the stars. Unless they freckle skin, I'm too afraid to touch. When I described my first time to a friend, they said, Jess, I think you cast a spell on him. Ha <laughs> ha. No, but say, psych, right now, I secretly fear that perhaps I did. You can't accuse me of doing anything like that on purpose, though, because my purpose would never be anyone leaving. Wow. You killed the vibe again. I lost the thread again. I lost the love in lieu of losing my mind. Is that what the record keeper meant? Oh, so it was about love. Why is everything about love, even when the house is on fire and we're trapped inside? The ocean, I mean. The world, I mean. My body, I mean. And me high up in my head looking down at the scene. Now he's saying to me, it's okay, come out, let go. You're so hot. Um, and this is my last poem called Blueprints. Um, it's not super graphic, but like it's about getting a paper cut. So I don't know if you... I watched everything everywhere all at once in the paper cut scene. I had to watch it like that. So that's why I want to. <laughs> um, my finger doesn't wait for a spindle so much as it is aware of every spindle in the world all at once. But who has time for that? Momentarily, I forget and I open the cardboard box too quickly. The slice deviates my fingerprint, so now I can start a brand new life. One where I rob a bank or touch a prized painting or at least relearn surface tension. A new layer of skin breaks through my thumb like a beak with its singular tooth above a gullet grasping for air even as the air burns again. I am scared to hold anything and also myself, but I marvel at how free, even for a moment, a piece of me can be. I hate the cut, but I am fascinated by the healing, by the membrane spread like a stained sheet over oxidized metal. The resistance won't be televised, so no one will know what will happen to any of us, save for the indecipherable maps our fingers leave behind. To attach a name to these patterns our biology creases into doesn't mean we figured them out, but we never know that until we've already given them away. I think back to kindergarten, the police officer handing me a lollipop after pressing my thumb into the ink to mark a blank space under my name. A needle reaching back into my past like a worm hooked through the meat of my old eyes. I am just sockets echoing this memory on a loop as protesters are dragged across my screen on an endless loop. So now I pick, I pull, I touch, I grasp, I make the ink, and I make the ink do what I want. Thank you. I mean, I just feel like reading Jess's poems and going on the journeys that they take us on is is my multiverse of madness. Like every Jess Ruskala poem contains within it so many different possibilities at the same time. They yes, absolutely. Um, Speaking, oh, and uh, I wanted to say that you can and should uh, buy Jess's book, The Magic My Body Becomes. It's so good. It's, I mean, it's just, it's a book of, of what you just heard. How, how could you refuse? How could you say no? You need it. You must have it. It's in your shopping cart right now. Click, click buy. It's yours. It's on your doorstep. Go get it. Um, Speaking of multiverses, really, uh, the next person that we're going to hear from this evening, there's really only, you know, they've they've written some uh, books, you know, they've done some um, other kinds of work, you know, but really, I would say the main thing that they are, are known for, 
uh, is being probably the world's foremost scholar uh, of the Vanessa Hudgens cinematic universe and the Princess Switch films. Um, I, I personally can't think of mm, something that is, is more, you know, iconic about, about this next poet. Um, and so please welcome our, our, our foremost Vanessa Hudgens scholar, George Abraham. Oh my goodness gracious. So if I had known I was going to be introduced in the context of my work on Vanessa Hudgens, um, I wouldn't have started with a serious poem. But <laughs> anyways, um, I'm going to start with a smaller serious poem uh, because it was written um, with thanks to Noor and uh, specifically her poem, Fuck Your Lecture on Craft, My People Are Dying, which has been on my mind a lot lately. But I promise it goes uphill from here. <laughs> After the depressing shit, it goes uphill from here. Um, uh, but I've been thinking about how, like, oftentimes, like, the poems I love the most are the ones that leave me with questions more so than the ones that give me answers. And I think Noor for Noor's poem for giving me um, the questions that this poem asks. Realisms. I can't write about the ghosts of Palestinian realisms without naming our need for a collectivism beyond consumption. I've grown tired of that lyric, the seasons in seasoning, the insistence of ash, the bullets rubber bite, or other trajectories from tables to clouds of white phosphorus that fail to name or steward the land beyond an insistence of our. If I must articulate the sharp behind the reap of torched wheat and not its crackle or the angle of wind that named me survivor, then who can be held in this field of memory? Hush. Landfall, gentle, gentle. The funeral lilies are but our promises to break in our mother's hands, but how many of us have ever seen our parents alive? The surrealisms of binaries preceding me, myself, and collective. What is my eye but the grass of blades? If this were a sonnet, would every line ending be a failed Marxism? Do we ever want to own those flowers, beloveds? Thank you all. So let's get weird. <laughs> um, I think one of the things that Noor uh, inspires me, I guess, in my own poems to do is... Um, I don't know, just to, to get weird to write into the, like, little niches and um, maximally fabulousness of self. And despite, I guess, um, the heaviness of <laughs> a lot of the topics that we write about. Um, and so uh, this is a bit of a weird baby experimental <laughs> new piece, um, which is both... <laughs> An ode to the watch list and a disappearing guzzle for the body who stayed. I get it. You're obsessed with me. <laughs> Damn the waters. Now you'll be blessed with me. <laughs> when did you get this fabulous? A beloved said after reading your little profile, your unintentional publicity for me. <laughs> I still hope someone spits in a Zionist salad today and not in a sexy way. Happy Aries season to me. <laughs> Call it what you will. <laughs> Double take, bioweapon, terrorist sympathy. You'll never get a body's apology from me. It began with a need to be seen. Now you've made a garden in the seeing of me. Who Midas the touch golden? Who echoed the body a disremembrance? Was it me? From the water's perspective, Narcissus was a failed experiment in surveillance. Gaze into me, gaze into me. 
Screenshot your Canary Mission profile for dating profiles, a friend jokes. I was a child in your photo of me. In a life where he mattered, the Palestinian boy disappeared mid-school day over a Facebook post. He'd be named Ganymede. They made me feel observed. She said after small talk over dinner with poets, to which I replied, maybe that's why they're so dear to. My girlfriend's still around, he said, while asking to reschedule after a month's phone tag. I can't be open around her like I can with. It wasn't the straight boy coming out to himself, but how he learned to forgive his father in that actor that made it a love story to take me to uh, Ibiza after my subconscious asked him in the dream before waking to a message, I can't wait to escape this hellhole with Love more like Yamar than Malekati, more Hayat than Habib, more Habib than don't say burial, don't bury. How Imtalak to own shares its root with Malika, queen, meaning to have a body is to queen myself, the distance between pleasure and. I love showing off to you, he whispered into the hole, collapsing our cross coastal distance. I like to watch, said my quivering. Can you see it yet? I'm beating you to respectability's punchline. In the heart of the empire, I dared to want. The Ars Poetica is where my body feels most at stake, I say, while running from a poem about but does there even exist a poem where my body has ever not been at stake? I ask the muse who names himself my center, writing love always in the shadow of empire, but never empire collapsed to dust beneath the shadow of a new sun made possible by names for lights beyond mere distance, not stellar, but dizzying still in spin and endless, not moon of sky, but Amara face rising, setting east of nowhere, but the space of bedside impressions lift open my curtains if you must see me in the light of your own eclipsing catch me breathless in quiver starstruck by nothing but my name my name my name my name thank you all um so I am actually going to skip this next poem and just end with um, a little shocker, um, a little surprise um, prompt that several people in this Skype room have written to, uh, dedicated to summer 2019 and the Wet Hot Arab Summer uh, retreat and uh, which uh, definitely was not the first time I met Noor or, or actually like anyone in this room but was kind of a very solidifying moment I think for all of our uh, friendships and um, and this uh, title is a approximate mistranslation of a quote from Gloria Bell well grabs wine glass when the world ends I hope we go down dancing aha uh -huh. This one goes out to all my potato-shaped people. We're beautiful in spite of beauty. We string ourselves to ceiling flans and fly around your rooms like the heroes you needed but didn't deserve. We travel in packs. We egg all the Zionist stores in Beverly Hills. We sleep on couches until we become American as shit on a sidewalk. We don't clean up unless mama's visiting. A neck is a kind of bridge, and we step all over bridges. We replagiarize each other's photos and call it a triptych, dare I say lineage. We reinvent Celine Dion in five different keys, and now she's family. We debcat Britney Spears and call her love language, taste of poison. 
paradise. The only love worth dying for is a love you can return to and from. We clog toilets. We steal mansions from white people. We burn our desires beneath a cheddar moon and drink rosé from bottles we can't even pronounce. We wail about it in a white girl's accent. We blend chickpeas into water and say, you can't just ask the hummus why it's Israeli. Let's be honest for a second, friends. We can never give, forgive Scarlett Johansson for what she did to the sidewalk that night. Sorry, not sorry. The moon doesn't speak your language. Sorry, not sorry. Today is nothing less than catastrophe, but believe me, we'll go down singing our music this time. Believe me when I say we love the sound of our own laughter. We do. We really do. Even as it chokes us to death. Thank you all. Well, here we are at the end of the world, listening to poems about it being the end of the world and dancing. And that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing today. We are dancing in celebration. Um, something that I just, that I realized or have been realizing is that there are six of us on this call right now. So what we should have organized is, is at some point we all hold up a sign and like, like I hold up deer and then the next person has God and then, and then we just spell out Noor's title. Each of us has one word. That would have been, you know, I'm just kicking myself because it really would have bumped this up in like the YouTube sort of algorithms. Um, I imagine we would have been, you know, top, top page. Maybe we could really monetize this. It's okay, missed opportunities. Well, um, you can and should buy several of George's books, chapbooks and a full length, Birthright, which was published by Button Poetry and won the uh, Arab American Book Award um, and is just, I mean, wonderful. Um, so you should get all of those. They're actually, they're already in your cart along with Jess's. Um, so that's super convenient. Um, you don't even have to go looking for them. Um, the next person that is going to celebrate Noor's book with us today um, is a poet. Can't believe that. Look at that, narrows it down a lot. They're also a poet who, who with a chapbook. We, and now, now things are getting interesting. Now the plot has thickened. Um, and what I will say is that not only does this person break open our hearts a little bit with their poems and create constellations of vulnerability and surprise and joy and intimacy, but they also blew my mind earlier before this call was public, when it was just a secret little gathering, by saying that medically, technically, teeth are, are skin. Um, and they were able to say this because they are also, and you may have noticed way back at the beginning of this call, if you look back through your notes, I did say that Among Us was, was, was a dentist or a person who is involved in the field of dentistry, of oral hygiene, of tooth studies. So um, that person is here to share not tooth studies, but word studies poems um re a lot of really smooth transitions happening in case you haven't noticed i'm, I'm really you know i'm putting this, the threads together into our multiverse please welcome our next reader Renwa johari uh thanks so much fargo that's um i have to say like that was really impressive <laughs> um i'm so pumped to be in this digital space. I'm so happy to be celebrating Noor, uh, who I've only met over the phone, I think, and uh, is amazing just from that phone call. And immediately I was like, I wanna be friends with this person. Um, I am like really honored and excited. Uh, I think there's something to be said about like Arab poet spaces and uh, what they can evoke. And um, I'm just, I'm so happy to be hanging out with you guys. Uh, I have I have a couple of things. They're all like relatively new because um, I was getting tired of the old shit and I just I just needed a, a small departure. So uh, I'm gonna start with the most 
the most newest one. <laughs> and uh, after that, uh, read a couple um, that are more Palestinian in, uh, in inspiration. So uh, this is called, uh, America finally shows me some mercy and deports me. But I think I can't leave yet. America was just about to teach us how to make terrorism look like an accident. I've only just learned that when you strip the colonizer of its victim complex, it implodes, not like a soft almond rotting on its branch, but like a tower detonating from the basement with a plane in its side. I have been here so many decades already, and I am still making mistakes, like I offer even the mailman a coffee. I tell the construction worker, Yatik al Fayefi, I don't enter the bedroom in my outside shoes, and sex still makes me weep the same way a pigeon sharing its meal can. Love is a remnant of the regressive, you see, and I just need more time. If I leave, America will never teach me all the things I need to learn about myself. I am filthy, for example, and hairy. My tan is okay if it's artificial, i.e. if I laid in an electric coffin to get it. And these are good lessons. America knows you have to die a little on the inside to be passing. Everyone here is beautiful, so full of promise. And promise is like an expensive orchid that needs the right capitalist soil to bloom. But with immigrants, sometimes promise can be a nuisance, like dandelions which we call hindbi and eat with lemons and onion, but which Americans call a weed and whack. Too much promise and hard work means anyone can be exemplary. This is on the brochure for America, but when you arrive, the fine print says, not you. And when you call the number on the brochure, everything is an automated loop, so you have to find out yourself. I can't leave yet because America has been promising me some glory since I put my hand over my small heart and recited its allegiance. I said under God, but learned that if I pointed to the sky and said God in Arabic, it would be the opposite of that allegiance. So all the words I remember from my past lives, like inshallah, like smallah, like rizqallah, are swears. Swears like a promise here, not like curse, but curse like omen. Anyway, America is all about the promises you make to it, and not at all about the promises it makes to you, which means America is a contract that protects the employee. America is the employee, we are the ones employing it, paying it with taxes, paying it with allegiance, assimilation, even our art. And I'm not so sure that we are getting a return on our investment. America, after all, never shows up to work, always makes us feel unsafe, keeps sticking its nose where it doesn't belong and keeps lying on its resume. To put this in American terms, it might be very much to your benefit if America is the one that gets deported. It sounds cruel, but I learned it all from the best and only America I know. Um, thanks, guys. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. It's it's still it's still an adjustment to like read to yourself because just my cats are here. Which uh, nor for you at the end of my reading, I'm gonna grab Poochie just to show her because she's she's so smush. Um, she has no idea it's coming. She's like sleeping soundly. Um, okay, the next one's really short. It's called uh, The Arab Domesticated. And originally it was titled The Arab After September 11th, but they're the same thing. So we're gonna, we're gonna go down that route. The Arab Domesticated. I snap at, I do not kill, even the fly. I'll put them on the tights. Ask only that you pronounce me right. I've changed my sounds to sound like you. Tap where on your lap I'm needed, turn it off the news. I'll cry. Forgive me this vast land, empty stomach I keep pitching my bread to. Now you've seen my savage hair is not straight, not yellow as road paint, but still somehow a dead end. I swear I've stopped God's palindrome, all the pseudonyms with my other scarves, away. Despite bad press, you find us to be harmless as cats. I arch back up into your any colored palm. Okay, cool. So last one. Um, and I was gonna write a poem for Shireen Abu Akli, Allah who was uh, murdered by the um, Israeli state uh, while she was wearing her press vest because it's all about class. Um, and I couldn't, I still can't. I grew up uh, listening to Shireen as many of us did. and. Um, 
I'm reading instead another poem, which I wrote last year when uh, Israel bombed uh, Gaza and uh, the New York Times finally published something about it. And there was like pictures of kids on the uh, front page and they had Arabic names. And I thought that, you know, to somebody white and who does not speak any other language, that's meaningless. So um, this poem is called, I translate the names of boys killed in Gaza. In the city of poets, there is a boy with a stone. He is the guardian, lion-hearted and small, the stone half of his palm, his palm half of mine. The land scorched by naked sun, the blue of the sky lightening his eyes. In the city of poets, there is a boy with a stone. We call him Haidar, which means lion, which means brave. We call him Khadir, which means goodness. We call him Ahmed, which means commendable. We call him Rashad, which means good judgment. In the city of poets, the boy with a stone can visit his family in Al-Quds, which means Jerusalem. He picks oranges and lemons with his grandfather on an orchard as long as his small boy body can see. He fills a basket with vibrant fruit for his mother. He doesn't drop the stone. We call him Riyadh, which means gardens. We call him Siraj, which means light. We call him Mazin, which means cloud. We call him Saad, which means happiness. We call him Basim, which means one who smiles. He is always smiling. On his shoulders, he holds his sister up to a branch she can't reach, and they both fall, laughing, to the soft red earth that's known them and fed them in every incarnation. He leads her back home where their mother bakes bread. He holds her hand. He doesn't drop the stone. We call him Mahdi, which means rightly guided. We call him Amir, which means prince. We call him Ala, which means nobility. We call him Sulaiman, which means man of peace. We call him Mustafa, which means chosen one. In the city of poets, there is a boy with a stone. At school, he memorizes verses from Darwish and Al-Qasim. Midday outside, the sun overhead warms his small body as he kicks a ball to other small boys like him. In each of their hands, there is a stone. We call him Hani, which means carefree and happy. We call him Tariq, which means morning star. We call him Salah, which means peace. We call him Baha, which means brilliance. We call him Marwan, which means stone. In the city of poets, the boy sleeps in a bedroom with his brother. On the walls, there are posters of soccer players and musicians. His parents smoke and laugh downstairs with their neighbors. Outside, the only noises are from crickets. The carpet of stars above them lights the angles of his brother's face. He thinks his future face. Even in sleep, they don't drop the stone. We call him Salim, which means safe and secure. We call him Hazim, which means determined. We call him Omar, which means long lived. We call him Khalid, which means endless and eternal. In the city of poets, a tank waits for him, an army behind, flanked by a police brigade, glazed in impenetrable armor. Over his home, the deafening whine of an airstrike. The boy will wake on this day, his stone in hand, his hand clutched like a heart at the moment of flight, our guardian, and we will call him Shaheed, which means martyr. Ooh. That's a lot. That that poem Fs me up every time I read it, and I, I still feel like I need to read it just because uh, it's a way to honor them um, and, and who they were and the names that they had. Um, as promised, I'm going to show you guys Poochie uh, just to lighten the mood a little bit. So give me five seconds to grab her. Uh, and Poochie is kind of yellow. So, you know, this is kind of like Dear Yellow is actually about Poochie. <laughs> She's really happy, despite, despite what it looks like. And our next reader is Pucci. Please welcome Pucci. Um, Pucci is a Nobel Prize laureate, um, but they actually refused the award. Um, they've had many, many books published. Um, yeah, they do. A, Pucci does a lot of really great community work, um, you know, really making space to uplift other cats. Um, and we're just so glad to have him here. Um, <laughs> we're having fun. We're having fun, everybody. We're celebrating. Um, wow, uh, that was so, so beautiful. And of course, you can and you should purchase Zinwa's book, Bint, her chapbook, which is out with Radix Media. Um, you should get it. it. You would be so surprised to learn, but you it's already in your shopping cart with the other books. I put it there for you. I didn't want you to have to try and find it. So I just snuck it right in there. So just hang.
Titan, just click, click right after we're done. Um, okay, we're gonna keep it rolling. Our next, our next reader. What, what can we say? You know, a person who, in I would say, is just one of the best at at yelling and screaming about the work of the people that they love, hyping everybody up. Um, making work that encourages us all to do the same and hype it up. Uh, a fellow appreciator of a well-designed book cover, you know, a, a really nice font, a, a, you know, not, nothing too much, just something that's really, really solid. We both really enjoy Noor's book cover, something we've talked about. Uh, you know, major gamer, you gotta say that, big time gamer, iconic community member, uh, Mitski fan, We'll get to that later. Uh, please welcome, one and only, Summer Farah. Hello. Thank you so much, Fargo, for that introduction. Um, ooh, I'm still kind of like teary from the poem, but I can't wipe my face because an, a pen exploded. <laughs> and if I did that there, <laughs> would just be smear all over my face. Um, so I'm just gonna, yeah, we're gonna go. Um, Noor, I love you so much. Okay. <clears throat> At the Met Cloisters, I count what does not belong. In the rare treasures room, heads shuffle closer from across display glass. People fall in love around stolen objects. I long to drink out of the cup from somewhere in the Near East. The label reads, Crusaders and merchants alike love to carry fragile objects from the Holy Land, even at risk of breaking. Encased in glass, we are remembered for when they were fragile. There is only one object labeled somewhere in the Near East in the rare treasures room. How often were they careful with our bodies? So this next poem came from, I was looking in the deep recesses of my notes app and I saw the title anti-moon poem. And then the only thing written in it was like Noor idea. <laughs> and I think we had like talked about it together. Um, and so this is blame it on the moon baby for Noor. Maybe I like light pollution. A childhood of not knowing the difference between airplanes, lightning bugs, moonlight. I squish my face against the cold car window and the moon follows. I've only been afraid of the moon once. Consider. I'm lonely. I always have been. Consider. I'm crazy because they've decided it so. Maybe the moon controls the tides. Maybe I feel suicidal at the beach. I remember. Hairy legs resting in sand, voice lost in gut, lonely even when people are here, who is to blame? I watch the tides and think of all of the little deaths, of the microorganisms suffocating under my thighs. I am always doing something wrong. There are no lightning bugs here. Now I wait only for moonlight. Even California skies cannot deny me this. Recall a time knee deep, in dirt and wood chips, letting spiders weave between my finger fingertips, ladybugs using me as a bridge across the leaves. I feel them crawl all over me now, especially in the moonlight. I wake up from a nightmare and it's there, peeking through my window, me, the moon, my fear. If I leave my room, I'll die. If I touch the water, I'll die. If I tell a doctor, I'll die. I'd like to blame the moon. I track my symptoms with its cycle. If I cry tonight, I'll blame the crescent. If I lose it tomorrow, I'll blame the half. I'll blame the full, I'll blame it all. I'll blame the tides and blame the smog when I forget to go outside. My lungs are weak anyway. I love excuses. I love to pretend nothing is serious at all. I love to pretend I'm making it all up. It's what they say. Imagine us all, if I was, I look to the sky. Poem for Ekka, before and after settlers torch Palestinian homes, May 2021. One. I sing to the sea air in Ekka, 
the first and only time I visit Palestine. An American song out of my American mouth. My cousins practice their English, and I memorize no language but their voices. We eat white fish, and I cry at every bone I miss. Salty tears and salty salt and salty sea mingling on my lips. Oh, the sting is so good when you love the air that sends it. I know I was happy once. There is a photograph to prove it. My uncle, warm-faced, me on his shoulders, and a white shawl to cover my arms, newly baptized by God, by home. Then they flank us on either side. In Akka, I sang to the sea. Seven years old, and my first love, the Mediterranean breeze, or maybe it was Tabaria. Oh, if only I could tell the Dead Sea. I love it, too. Two. I sing Palestine. Americans practice no voice. Bones tear at sea. Oh, the air was happy once. No ash covered home. Akka sang the sea. I love the breeze. Oh, the dead too. <sighs> okay, um, so these next two are both from, um, I released a zine of poems for my birthday. Um, I am a Gemini, like this book that we are all here celebrating. <laughs> um, and it's poems that are inspired by Mitski, because um, I am a resident sad girl. Um, so these are this is the poem that opens, and the next one is the poem that closes. And I think they're both like they're a little bit like happier. So you know, a little a little like something unexpected from a Mitski poem. So <laughs> I have a playlist called airplane emoji nervous breakdown. That's just love me more and nobody and cop car. I used to hear children playing outside my window, wrote poems about their aliveness, desired laughter on my breath more than anything. And now I hear insects that chirp and birds that get stuck in the wiry tangle of bushes. I step outside to help it free, and with this act, I want to live. When I see the roadrunner and the rabbit chew grass side by side, I pretend they are friends, and this too makes me want to live. I want to live, contrary to popular belief. Sometimes I will never die is a fear. Sometimes I will never die is a promise. I have no delusions. I know what will become of this poem, and still, I want to live. Let this serve as incantation and nothing more. I want to be different. I want to be new. I want to be awake to see the sun rise. I want to be awake to feel noon on my skin. I want to be awake to taste big season again. I will be a new girl, a girl worthy of love without transaction, a girl who does not lead with apology, a girl who does not know loneliness, a girl who does not fear the threshold, a girl who will never die, a new girl nobody will forget, a girl who is alive, alive, alive. And then... Um, this is called This Is A Life, Every Possibility. It is based on the song from Everything Everywhere All At Once, which is a film I have not seen. So, uh, <laughs> this is a life, every possibility. I eat a warm croissant filled with homemade apple jam. The wind rustles through the California oak, and I know this is a life. It's midnight and I pull halawi from the fridge. Someone I love slices rosemary bread. This is a life. On arrival, pita stuffed with salty white cheese. This is a life. In another memory, we share sashimi and mac and cheese and mussels and shawarma and leili libnan. This is a life. A cat sits on my toes, a weighted blanket covering us both. This is a life. I keep the window open wherever I am, lest we forget the sound of birds and children and whatever else pushes gravel into bushes. This is a life. I used to live in a house falling apart. A friend lived, too, in every corner. We played music while we cleaned and ordered pizza late at night. This is a life. I used to talk to someone every day, get mad at the same things, and travel far to see each other. This is a life. Once I was afraid, ravaged my hands with chemicals, and left my stomach bare. This is a life. 
Someone I love taught me to, to need bread. I don't remember her voice. This is a life. Someone I love loved someone I could not. This is a life. I say there were no right choices, only less difficult ones. This is a life. Somewhere there is a me exhaling in the winter ice and somewhere there is a me who presses olives fresh and somewhere there is a me dressed in suit and tie and somewhere there is a me who still feel bay winds. This is a light. Thank you. Mm. Really just um so good i don't know so good um well uh thank you all so much for coming uh i hope you have a great rest of your evening that's it we you know we we're we i think i think we're done so um we'll see you later i'm just joking i'm just joking i got you um but i should say that you can and you should very zine that Summer was describing that's full of Mitski poems. Isn't that just exactly what you need right now? Doesn't that sound exactly like what is required for your life to continue? Well, it can be yours for only six payments of $29.99. Um, I just, yeah, contact me and I'll handle that part. Um, and I'll just make sure that you get it. So don't worry about it. Well, I'm sure you're wondering why we've gathered you all here today. And it is for one reason and that reason is in this very skype call wearing a bucket hat as usual it's noor hindi it is the poet laureate of flame and hot cheetos it is the caretaker of luna the cat um to whom we all nightly make our prayers um Noor's book is wonderful. Noor. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Fargo. Um, when I grow up, I want to be Fargo. I think that Fargo is the coolest person I've ever met. And every time I hear him read his poems, I am just like, my jaw is to the floor. Um, friends, I am absolutely in love with you. Um, the way that you make me want to be alive forever and ever and ever, despite the world that we live in um, and the way that I just love y'all with all my heart. Um, thank you, thank you, Jess and Summer and Rinwa and George and Haymarket and all of the people. Um, thank you for showing me Poochie. I fucking love that cat. I'm obsessed with that cat. And that's saying a lot because I have a pretty awesome cat myself. Um, in case you don't know her, her name is Luna. And um, yeah, but like Poochie is like up there. Like that, that like fucking face, man. Like, <laughs> um, yes, please, please buy all of the books that everyone has talked about. Um, and buy Summer's chapbook uh, only because it's like a Gemini baby and like we're super, super celebrating Gemini season and feeling that. Thank you Fargo for rolling with the chaos. I rolled into this meeting after picking up my sister from an international flight. And I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know why I'm here. We're gonna roll with it. And you know, that's what, that's what friends do. Um, I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read three poems from the book, I think, and then I'm gonna read three new poems. Um, and I, you know, we're just gonna see the mood and like what I'm gonna read because I I don't know. 
yet. I haven't decided. <laughs> um, okay. I will read... Uh, I will read my Flaming Hot Cheetos poem first, since Fargo shouted that out. Um, so we'll start we'll start there, and then we'll get, like, really sad, and then we'll get really hopeful. And then we're probably going to be more sad. Um, broken light bulb flickering away. Every week, I fall in love with a new bad idea. I hope one day to magic my body away. I wish for everyone to leave me alone and talk to me at once. Please forgive me. All I've ever wanted is to be the poet laureate of flaming hot Cheetos. All my desires go unnoticed. On my birthday, I visit a fortune teller. She tells me, beware of the letter J. Jackhammers, joylessness, jukeboxes, white men named Jason, Jesus. There is so much junk in my brain. My father escaped war and here I am, the perfect immigrant child. I assimilate so much. I drink Diet Coke at the rate of a middle-aged white woman. My mother wanted to be a writer. I should hold her sacrifices, but instead sob into a donut colored like the U.S. flag at 3 a.m. My cat is tired of my antics. My parents named me light because their lives lie in shadow, but I'm a poor example of joy. Sometimes I get so sad, I think about eating a quesadilla or assembling a tire swing or taking off my bra. Instead, I dream of the big, dumb heart my mother hands me. She tells me to carry it. I drop it every time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think the next poem I'm going to read is The Shell of a Cactus Fruit. The Shell of a Cactus Fruit. Dear Kay, have you dreamt of pomegranates this week? You always talk of the pomegranate trees that reflected from your grandfather's eyes. If history is a woman with gentle hands pouring black tea, let there be sunlight, a soft chair, a young Palestinian boy entering his home for the first time. Let the woman be Jewish and let there be nothing political about the way she yearns for her son's safety, about the years between 1948 and 1974, years your grandfather spent mourning the dirt in which he planted those pomegranate trees. In this version of history, there is some forgiveness. Come in, come in, she beckons you, you enter. Everything will change. Dear Kay, all this is real. You tell me stories. You repeat, did you get that? And do you hear me? Like, I won't believe you. You hate the way I interrupt Al Jazeera, how I seek answers to questions I shouldn't be asking. Your body is collapsed on our tired beige couch. Every hour we talk, makes me wonder if you'll ever make eye contact. Will you look at me? Palestinian habits die because Palestinians are dying, are dead. It happens every day. I know you think of your grandfather, how he spent so many of his days staring at a ceiling, inhaling cigarette smoke, relying on United Nations for food, for shelter. Year after year, you hovered around him unbreakable. Dear Kay, in a photo you stand next to him wearing a small smile, dress pants, and a sweater. In another you do not have gray hair. You are standing inside the grocery store you owned when you first came to America. Juicy fruit gum beside you, red and white roses for sale, heart-shaped erasers. It must have been Valentine's Day. There's hope in your grin. Mom says you wrote love letters to her once. 
She tore through every note you ever gave her, then burned them. This conflict rages. How much of you existed in those pages? Dear Kay, you told me once he would smack fear right out of you. In a memory, an Israeli soldier lines you against a wall, threatens to shoot. Your friend will pee himself while waiting for death's sweet respite, warm urine flowing down his legs. In another, the six day war rages. What you remember is the smell of fire, the sweet mulberries staining your teeth after days of migration. Years later, I will ask you for these memories again. You will ask me where I've gotten them. Maybe I dream them, I'll tell you. Later, you'll wash your hands. I'll notice purple juice coursing through the crevices of your palms, the smell of mulberries in the kitchen, an unfamiliar face. Dear Kay, I remember the cactus fruit you would always bring home. The shell of the cactus fruit has hundreds of hair like thorns hiding under its surface. You always knew the exact place the blade of the knife must slice to open the sweetest part of the fruit. Is that not love? Thank you. Um, I think that's the next poem I'm going to read is a new poem. Um, Good night, moon. Good night, red balloon. I write you a letter in the parking lot of a grocery store. At a party, a white boy offers me a job as a 911 dispatcher. Someone is running their hands through my hair, and I like it. My mother slept for the entirety of my life. Everyone beautiful in slumber. Sweet sunset, stereo, shame. I am not afraid anymore. I am subscribing to the Detroit free press after good sex and a tongue that tastes like winter. My father, the quiet chirp of a dying smoke alarm. I am a good operator. Is anyone injured? Does it look like a gun? Sometimes the music is so loud, my heart aches like a coffin. I am begging you to stay alive. I am hoping the dead still love us years beyond their withered bodies. Bright bones, bright balloon, what's your emergency? My stupid face in the mirror, daisies sprouting from my lips, my friends telling me they love me. So I've been in like, or I guess like I was, I was in like sad boy hours for like a while and I was writing these like sad whale poems. And um, I like somebody, a friend of mine told me about the 52 Hertz whale, which apparently it's like one whale. It's a super lonely whale. This is like what scientists call it. And it like makes this noise that's at a frequency that other whales can't understand. And this was just like fucking catnip for poets. Like this, this, this like <laughs> story about this whale. So of course I've been like writing this series of poems dedicated to this whale and like channeling all of my sad boy hours into um forging a connection they haven't like found this whale and if if they ever do i i'm gonna like throw a party for him for them so these are two poems and then i'm gonna evaporate into the sunlight <laughs> um the world's loneliest whale sings the loudest song and other confessions I won't make metaphors out of fish. If I have to die, I choose the ocean. If I have to live, I choose you. You, everyone I've ever mourned. I believe less and less of sunlight these days. I won't die alone. To awaken crying is to awaken displaced ghost of your joy in the bathtub, a face in the mirror, your nephew's painting in the foyer. My mother cried in bedrooms growing up. I would study her for hours. 
In a study, researchers learned patients who cried less are likely to have dismissive attachment styles. Today, every bedroom in the house is mine. I stopped crying at age 12. I am angry at the color yellow. As a child, I hated being the youngest. In dreams, I spoke a language no one understood. Research suggests loneliness increases cardiovascular disease. When my cousin died, she died alone. When the world collapsed around that we, she wrote, of coffee and sex, when you held my body close to yours, I thought of clementines, sweet citrus, all the world's lemons. We temper with honey. The world's loneliest whale sings the loudest song. This is what you'll tell me the first time we meet and I'll think about the ocean and I'll think about you. I never learned how to swim. I've been drowning my whole life. Studies suggest drowning lasts one to three minutes, but I'll never stop grieving. Scientists are still searching for the 52 hertz whale, but I swear he's here in my bedroom and I can hear him and he's telling me I can stop. Thank you. And last poem. Thank you all so much for being here. I love you more than I can ever say. The world's loneliest whale sings the loudest song and other confessions. Listen, I'm trying to tell you about swans flying into power lines how the heart rate of a whale is four to eight beats per minute, how bright a death can be, how Xana always smelled like fresh cut pears, chapped lips, an empty room, how her hair reeked of sunflowers even after her death. The way I held her close to my body is the way I hold you close to my body. Press my ear to your chest, my love. I've been asleep all my life, but even then, I can still hear the heartbeat of anyone I love miles away. Fact, a normal resting heart rate for adults ranges from 60 to 100 beats per minute. Fact, each year, one in eight people die of heart disease in their sleep. I lied to you that first morning, the hum of the fridge, a dog barking in the distance, you so quiet, you so sure of the beauty of sunrise, you did not ask questions. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Jess and George and Renwa and Summer and Fargo and all of my dear, dear friends. Um, I just super appreciate your poems um buy their fucking books buy their fucking books and then like go steal my book from a library or something um but buy their books and thank you guys we're out there in the void watching this very reading as nor uh as nor said you know get these books order them from the library buy them if you can um, you know, go to wherever it is that you work and uh, begin to advocate that that workplace uh, uh, follows the boycott divestment sanctions guidelines. Do that, you know, in your place of uh, wherever you go, anywhere you go, just start doing that, basically. It's very good practice. It's going to make you a better person. Um, and enjoy, enjoy summer. Summer is here, not just summer fada. But she's here. You can enjoy her work anytime that you'd like. But also summer. The summer is here. The sun is out. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful time to welcome this book into the world. So thank you so much all for being here. Uh, and we will see you next time. <laughs>